Okay. And uh, so we're recording the meeting. I'll, um, the only agenda item is the, um, the continued hearing. I'm promoting Tom and Mark to, um, to panelists so they can speak if, when they're ready. Nate, do I need to go through the, all the preamble information or can we be speedier than that? Did, did we already determine it was a significant structure? I can't remember if we did that. We didn't no. go through that to my memory. We did not. Uh, okay. Was it, right. And so I think, you know, there was, um, we had, and so there was, you know, here's the agenda. The, um, the commission wanted to have the site visit before going through the criteria. Oh, so I can okay. pull up the criteria if you'd like. Um, Jane, I, I guess maybe it was just do a little intro, you know, to say it's a continued hearing and then we can just okay. have the opportunity. Have the, do you want to read the formal one, Jane? I have it. Hi. I have, uh, I have it if I can uh, ma manage my screen. Well, you can just do it without showing us. Here we go. Um, okay, so everybody's here. Um, I will welcome you to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and public meeting on May 7th, 2020 at 3 p.m. Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. So I am Jane Wald, Chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, and so I'm calling this meeting to order at 3.06 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. Because this is a Zoom meeting, I'll take a roll call of uh, Commission members present. Um, so, let's see, uh, Jan Marquart? Present. Pat Hall? Present. Teddy Startup? Present. Jane Scheffler? Not present. And Robin Fordham? Uh, not present. Not here either, yeah. And Jane Wald is present. Um, so, if we have any technical difficulties, we might need to pause temporarily to rectify the problem and then continue the meeting. And if you do have any problems, just let uh, Nate know. We might, if there are problems, we might need to suspend the discussion while we settle those technical issues. And the minutes will note if a disconnection has occurred. Um, please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your hand, your raised hand and call upon you to speak. And after speaking, remember to re-mute yourself. Uh, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period and at other appropriate times throughout the meeting. Uh, please be aware the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. Uh, if you wish to make a comment, this is for members of the public, uh, if you wish to make a comment during the public comment period, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link, which can be found on the meeting agenda and is located on the town website on the calendar listing for this meeting. Uh, again, for members of the public, uh, please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've uh, joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the uh, Historical Commission Chair. If these guidelines are not complied with or the speaker exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Uh, so we are uh, continuing a public hearing, continued from March 18th, 2020 and April 22nd, 2020, concerning uh, a request to demolish the wood frame barn at 197 South Pleasant Street Russell 14A-195 owned by Amherst College. So for the uh, public hearing, um, I'll first ask uh, Mark Andrews and Tom Davies if they wish to make any 
comments. I just want oh, to let me correct the record. That, uh, Rob, Robin has joined the meeting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just I just saw that. Okay, sure. So we'll correct the record there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Mark or Tom, do you have any uh, comments you would like to make? Um, I appreciate everyone coming out to the, the barn uh, for the walkthrough and sort of working through all the the weirdness that we had to go through to keep everybody safe and distance properly. Um, I hope all your questions were answered and you got to see what you wanted to see. Thank you. So um, I will um, open the discussion to members of the Historical Commission if they would like to share any reflections on the site visit. And then um, we'll need to go through uh, the criteria for determining whether the structure is a significant structure. Jane, I'm just going to do a new share here. Um, these are some images that were taken uh, mm -hmm. during the site visit. Okay. So I, I can walk through those. This is, um, you know, this is upstairs. This is looking at, you know, looking south. So, you know, the stairs are over here on the right. You can see where the previous owner at some point patched a beam and tried to support more of the roof structure with some makeshift uh, elements. Here's a, a view just showing the, you know, some post and beam, it is interesting, you know, this is on the first floor, although this beam comes into here, it, it's hard to tell if some of this is, uh, you know, notched and pegged, you know, Mark and I saw some evidence of that, but on some joints, it actually, almost, it's really difficult to tell how structural the joints are. If they're, I'm not, I don't wanna say decorative, but I mean, they're probably serving some structural purpose, but not, you know, I don't know if that means the beams are repurposed, but sometimes it looks as if they weren't, you know, a full post and beam construction. Um, here's another just image of the first floor showing, you know, the center block foundation. And then, you know, this is looking, um, looking west, you know, this, so this space is the back. Uh, this is just, again, showing interior structure. There is, it's hard to see in this picture, but there is a lot of, um, you know, beetle infestation. So you can see, you know, the small, you know, entry and exit holes or wounds from the, the beetles. Um, and here's just a picture of the barn. So it is, you know, the hedge row makes it less visible from South Pleasant Street, but this is from, you know, right, right um, on the driveway and crosswalk. So, you know, if there weren't vegetation, it would, would be more visible. Um, those are my comments from the site visit. Okay, um, Tom. Um, am I, am I, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, um, so uh, I, I, what, one of the things in, in the, the last hearing, um, you had asked if we could go back and look and see if we could find any other documentation or any other evidence about the, you know, where this thing came from, if the 1930s sounds about right or whatever. Um, and uh, um, Mark and, and I uh, looked into it a, a little bit. We didn't, there, there's not much more to find, I think, than what uh, we had um, shared and, and more, more to the point what Nate, I think, had shared last time. Um, but uh, we, um, you know, I, I guess I wanted to address that because it was asked and to say that we, we don't really have much else to offer other than it doesn't show up on a, a plot plan from um, Mark. I forget what the date was, the 1920s or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, so it doesn't show up on that survey. Um, and then um, uh, we did ask the former uh, owner of the house and their uh, thought was that it was a you know a garage or a carriage house and um, they weren't aware of it actually you know being used as a barn per se they they weren't aware of any agricultural connections or there were no tools in it like that when they got the house or anything like that but um, that that doesn't really necessarily provide much information it's just all we know at this point thank you Uh, 
I'll just remind you, um, as I stated at our last meeting or the original hearing, that I'm uh, recusing myself from the discussion. I can help to moderate it, but uh, I'm, I am an employee of Amherst College and um, have a connection to this project in a in a, another capacity at Amherst College. So I, I won't be voting and I won't be discussing. But I will call on you if you raise your hand. Pat? I just have a question about the beetle infestation. Does that mean that the wood can't be repurposed if that were something that we were wanting to discuss? Oops. Mark? Uh, yeah, I, I can answer that. Um, I think what it means is that it's uh, probably not tenable in a structural capacity. Um, there may be some use for it, um, probably some use for it to the extent we're not sure until we slice the lumber up and see how bad the infestation is. Um, but the, the, uh, there's sort of a notion, and there was from um, Tom Harris, the gentleman we had, took a look at it, that um, some of the lumber could be repurposed uh, as sort of a a decorative element, but uh, it, it's structural days in a modern um, modern assembly are probably over. Does that does that mean that the structural integrity of the barn is now um, compromised? Mm -hmm. uh, for a barn, uh, I don't know. Uh, in terms of any structure uh, that isn't for an agricultural purpose that would have to meet modern seismic requirements and wind loading and you'd have to get a structural engineer to stamp? Um, absolutely not. Yeah, it, it would never fly. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there other uh, questions from commission members? Jan, you have? I can't find the um, raise hand thing anymore on this. Oh. You know, you guys, panelists may not be able to raise hands, so I think you can just maybe I raise your hand visibly or just kind of right. start speaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, I appreciated the site visit. I just wanted to thank Amherst College, y'all, for putting up with having to take us in one at a time. It was really worth seeing it. And I just want to say before we talk about each point on the designation checklist that it seems to me that entitling it a barn in the demolition request is slightly misleading that it really seems to me it's just a garage that reused structural elements construction elements from the previous maybe barn that was there because some of those timbers look older than the garage itself and I think that'll affect how we approach the designation discussion. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. It almost seems like there, this wasn't, um, you know, some of the old Sanborn map showed other structures here and perhaps this was um, you know, build repurposing some of those timbers and material because this footprint was never shown on those maps, the earlier maps, and it doesn't look like it was ever used for any, you know, and what not really, you know, what would have been bent for a barn in terms of agriculture. It's the wrong kind of foundation for the barn. It's not big enough for a barn. It doesn't have any of the utilitarian features of a barn. Right. So. Okay, um, are we ready to deliberate? I can, pull up the, I can pull up the criteria. Thank you, yeah, I've got a copy here, but yeah, if you could pull them up so people, everybody can see them. And yeah. remind me, Nate, do we close the public hearing before we do this part, or is this part of the public hearing? The, um, let me see if I can move this around a little bit. The, um, if the commission feels that uh, there's no more information that needs to be heard or submitted, there can be a motion to close the hearing and then this is, um, you know, discussion after the close of the hearing. Okay. Would anyone make a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. 
And I'll second. Second, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need a roll call, sorry about that. Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, okay, uh, Jan Marquart? Um, what am I saying here, yes? Yeah, it, you're, oh, if, oh, voting yes on the motion, sorry. Close the, okay, thank you. Short memory. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Pat Off. Voting yes on the, on the motion. Thank you. Hetty Startup? Voting yes. Thank you. And Robin Fordham? Let's see, Robin. 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 Oh, Robin is not here any longer. Oh, that's interesting. She had been maybe a call in. I don't know what happened. I just noticed that, right? She's not there either. Okay. Uh, let me check my email. Uh, she said she's having trouble with getting audio to work. Uh, oh, no. All right, I'm not sure she'll be able to join us. So that's, um, I guess that's fine, I guess. Okay. All right, so that's uh, three in favor, none opposed and one abstention. So the uh, public hearing is closed. Um, so uh, let's move to uh, looking at the uh, review criteria. And um, so right now on my screen, I see Jan and only the review criteria in the gallery. Um, so if I, that's fine, this is a, so you, you're not seeing the criteria in, in the entirety or? That's correct, yeah. If you do grid, oh, grid video, or swap shared screen with video, one there of those. We go. Okay, yeah. thank you. That was it. All right. Um, all right. So we'll be looking at historical importance, architectural importance, and geographical importance. Um, so we can go through these one at a time. Um, First of all, is it listed on or within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places, or is the subject of a pending application for such a listing? And I believe the answer to that is no. Right, not that I'm aware of, right? Yeah. Um, so for historical importance, does it have the character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, for the nation. Now, do we have to, oh my goodness, here's a process question. Do we have to go through a roll call vote on each of these sub characteristics or can we, can we take a vote on historical importance in the aggregate? That's a, I guess that's a question for the commission. I mean, sometimes you go through each criteria. I think we could do that and then, um, you know, I think if everyone just, um, if we go down the list um, and have a voice, um, yay or nay, from, you know, Jan, Hetty to Pat, that, that would work. I, I personally would find it a lot easier to make an evaluation based on each of the three categories once we've gone through the check, the checklist for each of the categories and then, you know, make a deliberate, make a pronouncement rather than point by point. So we could discuss point by point, but then come up with an overall decision on the larger category? Yes. Right. Okay, yeah, we can Why do that. Why do you think we need a roll call? Because it's a virtual meeting? Yes. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. So does anyone um, have any comments on the first subhead under historical importance, character, interest, or value? That's a tough one. <clears throat> I think it does have character um, contributions, um, not significant character contributions, but it's over a hundred years old. It's in an extremely vital central part of our town. Um, it sits within a context of other interesting buildings. Um, so I would say that it, it does meet the criteria in that capacity. 
This structure isn't over 100 years old, though. <clears throat> Wasn't it built in the 30s, 1930s? Yeah, it's 2020. So it's, it's 90 years old. 85, it's what? 90. It's, it's 85 years old. I mean, that's, it's splitting hairs, but I think that makes a difference in terms of the heritage and cultural makeup of Amherst in the 19th century versus the early 20th century or, or first third of the 20th century. Um, it has character, but I'm wondering if it weren't painted red, if it would have as much character to us. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I think that's a good point. <laughs> so if you take away the red, we basically have a garage with a workshop upstairs. Exactly. It's some, with some <laughs> nice old beams. Yeah, that are bug infested. I mean, I'm not trying to knock it. I'm just saying that I think we're really influenced by the word barn in the application and in the color. Um, but I don't think it functioned as one and it's not that old. Maybe the original barn that was there that those beams came from, then I'd be really fighting to keep it. But I think it's already compromised. I agree. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Is it the site of an historic event? No. no. <laughs> I mean, I as far as we know. <laughs> Identified Did George Washington sleep there? <laughs> Identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society. The president's mother, she had him. Does that count? Uh, <laughs> the president of Amherst I mean, College. if you have a college president as a son, are you influencing? <laughs> well, if you had him in the barn, but. <laughs> 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 in the car. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. No. 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 It was intended to mimic, but is it? That's a good point. Okay. So uh, we'll move on to architectural importance. We don't want to vote on this one and then go Can we do the historical importance if we... Yeah. I, I we, thought we were going to go well, through them all and then come back and vote on the three. Let's do it section by section, Jane. All right. Okay. Um, if you feel that this structure meets any of the criteria of historical importance, please, uh, please say yes, starting with Jan. No. Betty? No. Pat? No. Okay. Okay. Three, two, three, four, none against, one abstention. Um, so architectural importance. And um, Nate, I wonder if you could move the... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Up. Uh, sorry. Thank that? you. Yeah, that's great. Um, does... Uh, does this structure portray the environment of a group of people in an era, era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style? Mm -hmm. Any... I think if we go back to the fact that it's more a garage than a barn, no. Okay. Uh, does it embody distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type? Not well. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> uh, is it the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman whose individual work has influenced the development of the town? We hope not. No. Does it contain elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship which represent a significant innovation? No. Okay. Um, so uh, please indicate your vote, yes or no, <clears throat> if you feel that the structure meets any of the criteria of architectural importance. Uh, Jan? No. Betty? No. Pat? No. Okay, thank you. Three, three no's, none in favor, one abstention. Geographic importance. Uh, is the site part of related 
or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area? No. No. Um, no. I'm, I'm ambivalent on this. <coughs> um, maybe I'm just swayed by my site visit experience. Um, I was going to try and share with you something from a photograph I took uh, of the view back from the barn um, to the uh, street. You um, sent us that, right? You what's that? that? You emailed that to us. Did I? Oh, good. Yes, yeah. you did. So there, there yeah. <laughs> not, very, <laughs> not very clear. Um, I was very, I just was very struck by the fact that this is part of a sort of interesting conversation between building buildings um, some of which are also owned by Amherst College. Um, I think it's more, a, I think in terms of geographic importance, because it's sitting in the middle of them all, you know, next to a house that was, you know, the president's mother's house, which is a pretty interesting building, and a religious center, which is behind the site, which is also interesting architecturally, you know, the view from the top of the barn is interesting towards um, the intersection with Northampton Road. I, I just think that, I just hope that when they plan this new building that that, that is sort of in, 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 the, in the mix. Um, so I, I do think it has geographic importance, yeah. So here's the image, right, Hetty, that you took? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, want to see, yeah. I, I think that's that's huge, actually, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's why the driveway is there, maybe, so that as you drive out of the driveway from your garage, carriage, house, barn, that's what you see, you know, that's very interesting to me. Um, maybe I'm just really pushing something that doesn't exist for anybody else, but um, there's a lot of charm um, in the sighting and the positioning of these buildings. Um, well, so. <laughs> that will be true of whatever humanities center building is there. I mean, from the second floor looking east, you'll have that same view, same view. without the hedges and yep. so probably without the house on the right. But that's the beauty of Amherst College to me is that they've saved so many of these buildings and that the mm -hmm. campus is set within this historic center. So. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's perfect for a humanities center to have that kind of sighting. Yeah, right, I, you know. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very curious and excited about that. And what it would, think? it would. I'm uh, sorry. It, it just, it would seem that the view is intended for the house, and it's kind of a happenstance that the driveway takes in that same view. But I agree, Hetty, with you that if, and we can't have it speak to the new buildings, but if right. there were to be a window on that view mm -hmm. from the new building, that would be ideal. All right, so the, um, is the structure as to its unique location or physical characteristics, does it represent an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood? village center or the community as a whole? I'm going to stick my neck out and say yes. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, as much as you can see it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, anything would become, I mean, I know I've argued the other side of this for, you know, like the barn on Montague Road, but in this particular case, anything would be a familiar visual feature sitting there that if you could see it, right? And again, I think the fact that it's shaped like a bard and painted red is influencing how much we see it as part of this, a, a particularly special feature in this little neighborhood. Well, I'm not necessarily arguing that we, that we save this faux barn. I'm arguing for the geographic importance of that structure within its property, property boundaries. Mm. But it's more, I'm just going to play the devil's advocate here. It's more um, the visual feature of 
uh, uh, the, the vision from there as opposed to the barn being a visual feature for the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As the barn really isn't the garage, the barn really isn't visible from the road, not from 116. The side street, you can see it. But it's not, it's not something that driving up and down 116, you go, oh, look at that impressive barn. You don't notice it. Yeah, you it's not part the of the streetscape. The right. Streetscape. No. Yeah. You notice the house, and the, ha the house is impressive. It's of a certain age. But the, but the barn is just there. And, and I, I, in my opinion, I've gone past that so many times. And until I was asked to review the barn, I never noticed the barn. And I'm a visual person, so it, I'm just adding that to the conversation. All right. If there are no more comments on that, um, we'll take a vote on whether you believe the structure meets any of the criteria of geographic importance. Uh, so Jan? I would have to say no, the structure itself does not. Okay, Ketty? No, the structure itself does not. And Pat? The structure itself does not. Okay. Copycats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the cumulative votes on, on these three criteria, subjective criteria are that, um, this structure does does not meet any uh, does not fulfill any of the criteria of significance. So, um, so at this point, I think let's see. It, um, do we need to take a Nate? Do we need to take a specific vote on approving the demolition request? Yeah, I think a motion could. Um... Reiterate, Jane, what you just said that there was the structure was not found to be significant, and the commission, you know, votes to approve the demolition. That way, you know, it can we can move it along with the right. inspection okay. services. Yeah. All right. Um, does someone want to say so moved? Do you so want to do it that way? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting all ready to do this really complicated motion, but sure. <laughs> no, no, do it. Yeah. Do it, Jane. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't see the agenda to know what the address is. Oh, 97. Okay. So, seeing as 197 South Pleasant Street, the, excuse me, the garage behind 197 South Pleasant Street did not, <laughs> God, did not qualify as a significant structure under the deliberations of the Historical Commission today, comma, I move that we allow the demolition to proceed. Is that okay? I, I would second that, but I would make an amendment to say the barn slash garage because the request is for a barn. Sure, fine, yes, absolutely. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Pat. Um, if you are in favor of the motion, please signify. Um, Jan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Pat? Yes. And I abstain. So three to zero to one, and um, the, the demolition permit is, can be moved along All right. um, from here. So. Great. All right. So thanks, thank everyone. you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Mark and Tom. So I think one thing um, it's not, Mark you know, is on you send us all boxes of chocolate. <laughs> 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 We're all moms, you know, Sunday coming up here. Get in the mood. I do need reminders. <laughs> Organic and free trade, though. Dark <laughs> and dark. No, none of this milk stuff. Yeah, very dark, very dark. <laughs> the, um, there's, there's some on my desk right here. Oh, oh, but we have to stay six feet away. <laughs> the, um, there is another demolition application for 205 South Pleasant Street, the adjacent building. And I uh, asked the commission if May 28th works. It's a Thursday. You know, we couldn't have done it the previous week just with the uh, lead time to submit a, dem um, a legal ad. 
although we were meeting on the 20th as a commission, there wasn't enough time to get a legal ad in for then. So my thought would be just to move the meeting on the 20th to the 28th and combine them both as a hearing and a public meeting if that works for commission members and, and the applicant. Okay, uh, a time? I mean, you know, would it, it could be an, you know, late afternoon, it could be evening, it's really up to the commission what works, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that day, if there were, if it were okay with everybody, I'd rather get it over with in the morning, but because I have other stuff, but whatever works for you all. Okay. Fine with me. Morning, okay. I can Morning's do it before fine. 11, so um, 10 o'clock. Great. Great, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock works for me. Okay. Is that okay for you, Nate? Uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, it also, it, I mean, if we had other agenda items as part of the public meeting, you know, do we is an hour long enough or are we anticipating an hour is long enough for the public hearing as well to discuss the house? Oh, that's right. It's awesome. Yeah, okay. okay. Not nine o'clock. Does that work for everyone? Yep. It works for me. I just want to make sure, you know, do we think, does that work for the applicants, Mark and Tom, or do we want to have it be an evening? Um, well, fine for me. Tom, I think you're muted. Um, there you go. Uh, sorry, uh, nine o'clock can work for me. Um, I, I, sure. sure. I think one thing, Robin, you know, is working a little bit more now. So she thought she was, you know, the reason she, she tried to connect and then she had trouble while she was at work. Um, so her computer didn't have um, video. I guess the audio wasn't working very well. So. My only concern is if uh, Robin can't make it because she's working, Jane, I'm not sure what her uh, Scheffler, her schedule right. is. So I just, if we, let me poll the rest of the commission members and suggest either 9 a.m. or would we want to do it um, at 6 p.m., just, you know, those two times and see what people's availability yeah. is. I know uh, Jane, no, uh, I might not be able to do six, but if you had the other two, you'd be okay without me. If not six, would we do want to do four, nine or four? I mean, I'm, yeah, or three eight. again, whatever. Earlier is better, but whatever. Uh, uh, three or four would be probably a preference for me. Um, I think three would be hard for me, but four, if, but three thirty or four is okay. I'll, I'll poll commission members. I'll say they're nine or four p.m. and um, we'll let Tom, you and Mark know what um, you know what we decide. I'll have to send a legal ad out anyways. <laughs> but all right. All right. And this is the twenty eighth of May. Correct. Okay. Thank you. We'll wait to get your email. Yeah. All right. I don't all think right. nothing else for today. Um so so Mark and Tom, you're welcome to watch us go through the rest of the agenda in the next like two minutes. Or um or we could just wave goodbye. So, whatever you like. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. Take Thank care. you. Wait for that chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not kidding. I know you're not kidding. Well, you so, know I'm not, but I don't think they believe me. <laughs> yeah. What do you think I'm on these commissions for anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are there any announcements? Nate, did you know? Uh, the only thing um, I just noticed in the paper, I think it was yesterday uh, online that Scott Mersbach must have um, listened or picked up on the Civil War tablet discussion at the previous meeting. Mm. Maybe he contacted um, 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 it was Anika. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if she was quoted. He, 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 you know, kind of paraphrased some of the things she said. I almost look like quotes, but you know, maybe I'm not sure if that, um, you know, if that'll drum up any interest, but, you know, I think he, he was fair in his article just saying that there's, you know, she's a proponent of the project and like the tablets to be displayed publicly. You know, he said the commission could become, you know, said Nate Malloy said the commission could become a lead with approval of the town manager and council. But, you know, I think it was fair. Um, you know, it was just, I was surprised because he hadn't, Scott hadn't reached out to me about it or mm. if he did, I, maybe I missed the email, but mm. there's a little article in the Gazette about that. Hmm. Okay. I missed it. I'll have to go back. Yeah, it, it wasn't a, a very large article. It was a small article. And, mm -hmm. and I agree with Nate. It sounded like he had the um, 
minutes of our meeting or or had had gotten the transcript and was doing it from that. I think he may have interviewed Anika or maybe he was just quoting her from the meeting. I, I didn't read it that carefully, but I did see it. Yeah. I was, I was a little concerned that it actually explained where they're being stored. I was really surprised about that. That seemed a little sort of oversharing perhaps is the word. You yeah, know. that's a good point. I don't point, think right? we should, I don't, I, I really, you know, from a perspective of safety and security, you know, that's not good practice really, yeah. but. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Um, are there any members of the public present? There are no Make members. Comment? No. No. And we've already uh, talked about our next meeting date. So thank you for uh, setting that, con uh, continuing to Canvas to set that up, Nate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the only other thing we need is a motion to adjourn. Why do I have to make all the motions? How do you I'll make, make the motion. motion. Good. So all right. I, I, Second. Move that, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you. And Pat second. This is a second. So CJ and you have, have nothing to do with it at all. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last meet. Well, we have I have two more meetings and that's it. I have one more. Yes, yeah, it's sad. I don't want them to adjourn because I'll miss everybody. Oh, wait. <laughs> Just you only have two more historical commission well, meetings. You know, or we can say that there's some ongoing uh, business, Jan, that you can just have, you have to remain on the commission until it's done. So like, definitely, I don't think the writer's walk signs are going to be installed by June 30th, are they? Oh, no. I mean, this, I just, I, I, Anthony said, um, he, there are some issues with the contract. He's working on it. I just, I'm not even. Good grief. I, I did remind you. You did? No, you did. And I, I, I um, followed up with Anthony. Thank you. Okay, good. Do you want me to do it again? No, that's fine. Okay. No, I'll say that. <laughs> no, another, I guess hello. another, I could put it, I know we've adjourned another announcement would be that the owners of 562 Montague Road, you know, are going to proceed with demolition. I guess their permit expired. And um, Mitch, the owner had said that a contractor had reached out to him. I don't know if it was the one that reached out to any of the members, but he's going to work with someone to try I, to salvage. I gave the info to probably. Yeah, so he's going to try to salvage material, actually. They're a awesome. contractor is going to salvage. I'll check so. with him and make sure it was him. Right. He really wanted yeah. it. That's good, because he will use the stuff. Yeah, it's great. I don't know. He didn't, the owner didn't give any more indication, but he said that they're trying to salvage, so I thought that was great. Super. Yeah. Nate, is there any um, follow-up on uh, the Main Street property? Um, right. Uh, we, if we... 460-something, 462 Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the owner had you know, kept the, the um, posting on Craigslist and he put another posting in the Gazette as we had requested. And there are um, a few more people that were interested in another contractor looked, but the results were the same that, you know, the, the cost of taking it down was more than what the, you know, an owner was willing to spend, you know, essentially it would be cheaper for someone to build new on their property than take this down and um, build it. So he, um, he just actually reached out uh, last week and he hasn't, He's he's um, going to start maybe this week to look at taking it down, but he hasn't yet. But there isn't, there's no indication that anything will be salvaged or reused. Um, you know, but he did share. You know, he emailed everything to the town, showing the ads and email correspondence, but nothing nothing fruitful. Okay. All right. Well, we have a a, a motion and a second to adjourn, and now all we have to do is vote. Jan. Oh, we have to vote. <laughs> <laughs> this, is part of the, this is part of the discussion. Thank you before the vote. Okay, I guess. I'll let you all go have your lives. <laughs> uh, Pat? Yes. Yeah. I agree. We adjourn. Okay. <laughs> I, I agree. We adjourn. And I too agree. Okay. Hey, thanks, everyone. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all. Thank have you. Everybody. See you on the 28th. Thanks. Everyone stay well. Yeah. Yep. Likewise. Likewise. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.